Good afternoon and welcome to this Hutt Valley Chamber of Commerce Business live stream. So this afternoon we've got with us our Chamber member Carol Spears from One Day Training. Nice to see you this afternoon, Carol. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So Carol runs a company called One Day Training and provides a lot of workshops uh, through the Chamber but also uh, through her own business, it's her core business, is to provide a wide range of workshops. And certainly with the transformation and the transition we're seeing with the workforce and uh, work and the changes we're seeing with workplaces coming out of COVID and looking towards recovery, really important uh, that we start looking at how to build and develop the skills of the workforce while those skills are actually even changing um, and to be ready for well, what's ahead. So I think today's content will be very useful for us all to listen. I know that I'm very um, keen to hear what you're going to share with us today, Carol, because you know our workforces and our workplaces are experiencing um, pressures and challenges and opportunities that they've never seen before. So it's good to spend some time to think about how uh, we can build and develop the right sort of skills that we need uh, moving forward as we recover from COVID-19. So thank you very much, Carol, for sharing your expertise with us today. And we look forward to hearing what you're going to share with us. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Helen. It's uh, fantastic to be here. First live stream. So let's hope it all goes well. I'm sure it will. So uh, yes, as advertised, Carol Spears uh, been in the training game for quite some time. Um, over the last uh, 20 something years, I've been delivering face to face training, done a, been involved in uh, lots of online learning as well. Uh, and so uh, transitioning into this COVID world has been a challenge, I think, for everyone. But um, Hopefully uh, everyone's kind of got through it now. And I guess really what, what I wanted to focus on today was um, how we can build and develop skills for people that, uh, that you have. Uh, and the aim of this workshop is really for people that are managers, leaders, team, uh, team supervisors, that type of thing. So it give you some skills around um, handing work off to others, making sure it's delegated correctly. So I'm going to put a couple of slides up. Um, they're nothing uh, that you need to worry about too much, but uh, it's just really helpful to kind of work through the process and um, show you exactly uh, some thoughts uh, that I've got on the go for uh, building uh, skills. So let's get this running correctly. OK, there we go. So that's me. So today's session, uh, useful tips uh, and hints uh, when you're handing tasks off to others. Of course, where I'm really coming from with this one is that uh, a lot of businesses have possibly had to release staff, so you haven't got as many staff as you had before. Uh, it could be that you um, are having to do the same amount of work or even more work with less staff. So I'm thinking that uh, there needs to be some skill building, building by team leaders and managers so that they can really get their staff to do more uh, and to be more efficient uh, at what they're currently doing. So I tried to draw a little uh, dot diagram there. I'm calling this the learning curve, right? So this is a, a learning curve that people would go through. So basically, they start off with some training. Uh, they might read some books. They might get some hand-holding, some one-to-one -one coaching. Uh, they might got a, a show and tell. Uh, they might uh, attend a training course even as well to learn about new processes or new methods for doing things. Once the training is done, of course, then folks should put it into practice more or less straight away. There's a there's a value there in, in getting stuck in straight away. Uh, and so the practice element of the learning curve is that people should uh, try it out, uh, test it, see how it works. They might have to adopt or adapt a little bit. So uh, making sure that they're on track with their learning by testing out these new things. Of course, once they've had a go at testing and, and trying things out, trying the new methods or the new style of doing something, that's where the insights and knowledge comes from. So <laughs> the learning, I guess you could say, comes from there. So you can remember back to perhaps when you're learning to drive a car or learning to ride your bike. Uh, you could probably read up about it. You could watch other people do it. But until you actually did it yourself, put it into practice, had a few mistakes maybe, uh, then you suddenly gained some insights and some knowledge and you kind of knew what to do next. So 
as time goes on, people are practicing and hopefully using the new skills, honing them down, getting them into the right order. That's when the growth through mastery occurs. So really getting on top of that uh, new skill, uh, making sure you know all the ins and outs, and eventually you'll get to a new capability, which will hopefully uh, add to your CV, add to your skill set, and certainly you'll be able to pass on those skills to others. So that's where I see that learning curve uh, happens. Now, of course, You've got to expect around this area, around the uh, area of the training and practice, this is quite can be quite a slow process for people. So it's important that as managers and leaders and supervisors, we actually spend the time uh, setting the context for people. So making sure that they understand why? Why does it need to be done? Uh, who's going to be the end user or the end customer? Are they just doing one part of the process or are they doing the entire process or do they need to hand off to other people? Uh, and so knowing who the end customer is or the end user is in the sense of the chain, uh, then it's very useful for the person taking on this new task uh, to be able to understand that. I guess the other part of the context question is how does it fit in with everything else? So how does this contribute to the output of the company? How does this contribute to building uh, new clients or engaging new people? So spend a bit of time uh, when you are handing over a, a task to people to explain the context. How does it fit? Uh, who is the end user? Uh, and why does it need to be done? Why is it important to follow particular steps and processes? So. It is worthwhile sitting down. It doesn't need to be a great big uh, long conversation, of course, but it is worthwhile to set some parameters of who is the uh, end user and all that sort of stuff. So it's very useful to do that. The next things you want to kind of check out when you're doing uh, handing over this task and building skills for people is to think about their current workload. Uh, you know, what have they got on the go at the moment? Uh, have they got the space to spend some time learning? Remember that learning curve at the front part of their there, they're going to take some extra time. Uh, we all know people that can pick up new software, for example, very quickly. Other people take a little bit of time to really get used to it and understand how it all works. So again, each worker, each uh, person that you're dealing with will have a different capacity uh, to take on new, new tasks and new roles. So think about their current workload. Is there something they can stop doing? Is there something they could hand over to others so that they can free themselves up to learn this new task? So just plan ahead a little bit. Uh, allow them some downtime, if you think of it that way, uh, to get this new process or whatever it is skill under their belt. Think also about the support they need. Is there a YouTube clip or a manual or a process chart that they could look at? Is there somebody else in the office or somebody around the factory that could help them uh, learn this new process or the system? And also the tools and resources. It's, it's quite interesting and, and kind of funny at the same time uh, that sometimes you ask folks to do a new something new with new software but they can't log on. And so at the first hurdle, they kind of fail. They can't log on to the system. They haven't got the right um, settings or they haven't been allowed access. So do check that the technology is going to work for them and that they can definitely <laughs> log on and get started. Uh, so again, uh, lots of software has uh, YouTube clips and things like that that you can hook into to help you teach and train uh, and help them get uh, sorted out with uh, whatever the new technology is. One of the most important things uh, that I think about uh, when I'm handing over a new task to somebody is what are the quality expectations? How do I expect the output to be? What is the format that I want uh, the item to be delivered to me in? What is the style? What is the writing style if it's a report? Uh, what language should we use? Is it conversational languages or is it more technical language? So again, you might need to be quite explicit um, with a quality statement around what it is you're expecting. Some organizations, of course, that I've worked with have uh, large what they call style guides and the style guides have indicators as to what the colors should be, how the fonts should be used, where the logo should be placed. All those sorts of quality standards are well listed, well documented in their manuals. So uh, most smaller organizations don't really have that um, document. But, you know, hey, it's good to give it 
a person, a, perhaps a, a completed example. This is how I want the uh, document to be laid out. This is how it's supposed to be. So you don't get any nasty surprise at the end when you were expecting a Word document and you end up with a, a PowerPoint template or something else. So make sure you're clear about the quality. The other thing that we fail sometimes as managers and leaders is to give feedback. And by giving feedback, it's not just, oh, God, you've done that wrong again. <laughs> it's more about saying, hey, I understand you didn't quite get this right. Let's see how we can work together to, to make it uh, better or to improve the style. Um, now, giving feedback should be viewed as a job that a manager needs to do. You can't uh, allow anyone else to do that. It should be your role. Think about your quality expectations, as we've mentioned, and provide the feedback as soon as possible. You don't want to leave it right to the end uh, and you get a document or something finished uh, that you really weren't expecting. So uh, again, check in regularly, uh, make sure they've got the support that they want. Also, when you're checking on the support that they want, um, you might want to have a conversation with them about when should they escalate. So if they're really stuck and you're not around, who would they go to? Uh, should they just stop or should they carry on or should they wait until somebody's there to help? So make sure they know who to check in with uh, and when they should check in and who to escalate that um, problem to. You don't want them carrying on spending hours and hours doing the wrong thing uh, and you ending up with a, a product or an item that you really don't want or need. So watch out for that as well. Now, the final thing is just between you and me, right? <laughs> here's a skill that you really need to master. Don't take it back. Don't micromanage. <laughs> Don't take the task back. If somebody's slow on learning, allow them that learning time, as I mentioned earlier. Make sure that you don't get involved in the day-to-day -day and the nitty-gritty of the detail. They're adults, right? They can kind of figure stuff out. They can ask you when they get stuck. Don't micromanage and don't take it back, all right? So make sure you allow that person that learning time, you allow that person to, to grow and develop into that role. So I guess what we've been talking about uh, over the last little while is really about delegation and, and handing over tasks for growth. People do grow uh, by learning new skills and adding to their um, pile of uh, technical knowledge and things like that. So one of the things I'd like to offer uh, after the session, if you want to email me, there's my email address there, uh, is an ebook. And the ebook will tell you all about delegation, give you much more detail uh, about uh, helping people understand their role, helping people understand the tasks, uh, and some really good tips and hints about uh, making it uh, real and live uh, and allowing you to grow as a manager and leader and, and developing your skills and delegation. Uh, also, just while I'm at it, I've got a new course coming up, uh, just a half day, uh, 10 tools. So 10 tools that will help you in management and leadership. And it's really about planning for growth. So after the COVID period, some of you uh, might be uh, doing new things with new products and new services. So keen to help out where I can. So thanks. That's it from me. I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen now and uh, see if there's any questions that we have. Thank you, Carol. I'll just check for some questions as well and see if we've got any sitting there in the comment stream. If you've got any questions, then please just drop them in the comment stream and we can um, handle those for you this afternoon. So, uh, Carol, in terms of remote working, what do you see at, well, during the whole lockdown period and even moving forward as workforces change um, and some people want more flexibility to work from home and, and work in satellite offices and those sorts of things? What, what are some of the trends you're seeing around mm. um around the changes in the workplace? Sure, well, one of the things I've been horribly surprised about, and I say horribly because it's, it's not been a surprise to me at all, uh, but folks have said that, gosh, productivity didn't drop. You know, mm -hmm. people were fine working for home. They were adults. They kind of managed their lives. They managed the children. And they got the work done. Wow, what a surprise that was. <laughs> In fact, right. if anyone has worked from home before, they'll know uh, that they can start early. They can take a break when they want. They might work into seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, but they actually get the work done. So it's been a horrible surprise that that was a surprise, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Sure. I think people still will want to do this um, remote working. I think they'll want to do perhaps satellite working. I think there's a number of organisations around Wellington where you can rent a desk for a couple of hours, and I think that's brilliant. If you just need some buzz and noise around you to get that vibe going, I think that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 
Yeah, great. And in terms of skills for managers, when you've got people remote working, what do you, what sort of skills come to the fore? Right. So this is where the communication skills really come in. So touching base, checking in. I know uh, for one company I was working with, they do a little health check and uh, a welfare check. So how are you getting on? Tell us what's been happening for you. And it's really just that personal touch, really keeping in touch with your workers, uh, even if it's only 10 or five, five or 10 minutes. Um, it's really just appreciated, I think. The other thing that I think people are struggling with is too many meetings. So you have to be present at Zoom meetings and Teams meetings and all those types of things. So I think people are getting a bit tired of that now, but uh, I think that'll kind of ease off and we'll settle down on that eventually. Right, excellent. Okay, so thank you very much. I don't think we've got any other questions in our stream today. So uh, certainly a topic that we're all grappling with and certainly a challenge for us all, um, you know, as we find our new new style of working and, and, and start to recover from COVID-19. Um, what I will say is, uh, Carol, if you could pop your comments in the, are you in the comments stream, if you could pop your contact details, because I know sure. that um, you've got a course coming up, like you mentioned, but also somebody might want to contact you um, at uh, a later date or when they viewed this video and um, see if you can give them a hand as well. So thank you very much for sharing your expertise today. I'm sure, as we were discussing before we came online, you know, it's a, an area that everyone's going to be starting to rethink. So, uh, yeah, your expertise is very much appreciated. And thank you for supporting the Chamber as well. I think, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Cheers.